Next we have our order Arteodactyla. These are even-toed ungulates. They are paroxonic and adapted for running quite quickly. They have a very large and diverse group. Their main weight-bearing axis is through the third and fourth digits. Um, in most families, upper incisors or canines are reduced or absent, um, but some do have tusks. They have many different tooth types, including, including bunodont, brachiodont, selenodont, and hypsodont teeth. And there are three suborders. So suids are non-ruminating. They usually have four toes. They have bunodont cheek teeth and tusk-like canines. Then we have tylopodids. These are camels, so they have three chambered ruminant stomachs and a Y-shaped cannon uh, bone, and they bear weight on their pads. And then we also have ruminants, which have three to four chambered, um, a three to four chambered ruminant stomach, horns or antlers, Selena Dawn cheek teeth. They have lost their upper incisors and they usually have reduced upper canines as well as a cannon bone. So the first suborder that we have is suiformes. These include pigs, peccaries, and hippos. Um, and then uh, the first family that we have is suidae, which include our pigs. Um, they are found in Palearctic and Ethiopian faunal regions, but they are introduced all over the world. They are found in tropical forests, woodlands, thickets, grasslands, savannas, and deserts. They're gregarious, living in groups, and very intelligent omnivores. They have excellent senses of smell and taste. They have ever-growing canines that form upward, um, growing like tusks. They're, they have bunodont, brachiodont cheek teeth. They're omnivorous, and several species with have facial warts. Their snout um, has a cartilaginous disc on the end, for uh, rooting or digging through the ground. They have four toes with hooves, and the wild boar is what has been um, domesticated to our domestic pig. So there is one species that you will have to know, and that is uh, the domestic uh, pig, or cis scrofa. And this is the skull of the domestic pig. And then we have a few more um, skulls from this family. Still within the suborder of Suiformes, this is our family Hippo Hippopotomidae, um, and these include hippos. The, they are found in the Ethiopian faunal regions. There's two species. Uh, there's the common uh, hippopotamus and the pygmy hippopotamus. They graze on grasses along rivers, and they are not ruminants. They live in groups of up to 40 individuals. They're nearly hairless and they secrete something called blood sweat and it's to protect them against sunburns and acts like an antibiotic. They have bunodont cheek teeth, they're semi-aquatic, their eyes and nostrils are pretty high on their head so that they can um, put their whole body essentially underwater and they can stay underwater for about 30 minutes. They're quite closely related to whales, they're large and barrel shaped with short legs. Unfortunately, we don't have a specimen in the lab. This uh, is just a picture to show you what their skull looks like, as well as their teeth. Next is the suborder Tylopodia. This includes camels, guanacos, and other um, animals within this group. So we have our uh, family Camelidae, this, these are our camels. They're found in Palearctic, Ethiopian, and Neotropical faunal regions. They um, are domesticated and introduced, and have been introduced all over the world. They have social uh, groups of up to 30 individuals with different ages and sex compositions. Uh, their humps contain large fat stores. They have a ruminating stomach. Their stomachs can store 1.5 gallons of water in specialized sacs. They're gregarious, again, living in these groups, and diurnal. They have a cleft upper lip. They have selenodont dentition. So this is our specimen of um, a camel skull, two camel skulls, actually. 
as well as a uh, lower jaw. Next is our suborder Ruminadia, um, and the first family that we have within this suborder is our family Cervidae. So these are all of our deer. Uh, they live in cosmopolitan areas except for uh, in the Ethiopian and um, faunal region and Australia. They have a huge range of habitats. They're solitary um, uh, in species like the moose, and they're also found in herds. Um, for instance, elk and caribou. They have bony, an bony antlers in males, except for the Chinese water deer, and female uh, caribou have antlers as well. And they're grown and shed yearly, so they're deciduous. Their growing antlers are actually covered with velvet. Those with um, small or no antlers have these large canines. Um, like you can see in the Munt Jacks skulls in front of me, and I'll show cr a closer look at those just in just a second. They are gregarious. They do not have an uh, upper incisors. Instead, they have a calloused upper pad to chew or uh, graze with. Many have scent glands. They're herbivorous, and they are ruminants, and they have hypsodont selenodont dentition. So there are quite a few Alberta species that you have to know, and I'll go through all of those um, skulls in this video. So the first specimens that I have in front of me are our muntjac skulls. And you can see those canines. Next we have um, our mule deer. So you will have to know the species name for these guys and that's Odocoilus hem hemionis. And that's the male and the female skull. Next is the white-tailed deer. Um, you will also have to know this species name, and that's Odocoilus virgi virginianus. And the male and the female skulls. Next we have our moose, or Alcus Alcus. This is a female, and this is a male skull. Next is our elk, or Wapiti, and this is known as Cervus elaphus. And these are two um, male skulls, but the smaller one is the juvenile. And then we have our caribou, or Rangifer tarandus. And this is a male, I believe, as well as a partial skull, and the female. Next is our family Giraffidae. This includes giraffes and okapis. Uh, they can be found in the Ethiopian faunal region. Giraffes are gregarious and savanna browsers, while okapis are solitary and they're rainforest grazers and browsers. They have really long necks and legs. They are ruminants, so they chew cud and have a four-part stomach. They have a prehensile tongue. They have permanent horns called os ossicones, 
and they're actually separate from the skull bones and covered with ha um, hairy skin. They're herbivorous and they have brachiodont dentition and the okapi was actually only discovered in the 1900s. So just have a picture of a giraffe skull here. Unfortunately, we don't have one in the lab. You can see those ossicones on their skull, those um, kind of antler looking things. And then this is a giraffe vertebrae. This is the family Antilocapridae, and these are pronghorns. They're found in, Nearctic, in the Nearctic faunal region. They live in uh, deserts and grasslands, and they're a migrator species. They're found in small herds, and the males actually defend uh, territory during a rut. They're the fastest North American mammal, um, can run up to 100 kilometers an hour. Their horns are permanent. Uh, they're, they have a bony core off of the frontal bone. They have a deciduous keratinous sheath layer on top of those horns. And the males grow new layers um, underneath and the old layer is shed each year. They have rump glands and interdigital glands. And there is one species in Alberta that you need to know and that is Antilocapra americana. And that is the pronghorn. Next we have our family Bovidae. This includes cows, goats, and sheep. Uh, they're the largest artiodactyl family. All of them have horns, males, um, and also often females with a bony core and a keratinous sheath that grows annular rings and is unbranched and rarely shed. They generally have hypsodont and selenodont teeth. They do not have upper incisors or canines. They're herbivorous. They range from solitary, um, including some gazelles, to large herds like bison. They range in size from dictics, which are the size of a jackrabbit to a uh, yak and African buffalo, um, which, is a, which can be up to two meters at the shoulder. And they have a four chambered stomach and digest cellulose, cellulose through bacterial fermentation, the same as cervids. Uh, they're ruminants and um, we do have uh, two subfamilies of bovids in Alberta. The first subfamily is Capernet. These guys have huge horns used in headbutting contests, like in the bighorn sheep, and also for digging through snow. Um, bighorn sheep are found all along the Rockies, and they can ram each other at uh, speeds of about 20 miles per hour. They move seasonally up and down the mountains, um, and mountain goats are often found along the mountain ranges from Alaska to Colorado. They're extremely agile climbers with soft pads between their toes to improve their grip. And we do have two Alberta species that you need to memorize. The first is Ovis canadensis, and that's the bighorn sheep. This is a male skull and a female skull. And then the second species is Oreamnos americanus, and that's the mountain goat. We also have a um, muskox skull, which is also within the subfamily of Capernet, but you do not need to know this species name. The next subfamily within the family of Bovidae is the subfamily Bovinae. Uh, you do have to memorize two species, and that's the um, just the um, domestic cattle. So this is Bostarus. and also the American bison, or bison bison. This is the male, and I believe this is the female. Lastly, um, just to show you some more examples of different types of um, horns, this is still within the subfamily Bovinae. Um, 
we have a Sega antelope horn specimen. We also have a spiral horned antelope specimen. You can see that spiral. These get pretty large and very tall. Then we have a springbok horn. We also have a impala specimen, partial skull and horns. This is a Barbary sheep with horns. And lastly, a hunter's heart beast specimen with horns.